Good morning, everybody. Today is November 9th. Happy Tuesday to you. Dr. Vong here with a quick COVID update. I'm going to tell you, um, my partner uh, got on the internet and found a place for us about 40 minutes away from where I live to get my five-year-old vaccinated. So I'm going to take Mason to get vaccinated today. Apologies for my allergies. I ran out of my drugs. <laughs> and um, after school, I'm going to take her to get vaccinated. And, um, you know, they're really doing a pretty decent job of rolling out the uh, pediatric dose vaccines um, in, in pediatric uh, patricians' offices. But you can also just go to a pharmacy and just um, they're going to want to know your pediatrician's name and um, you'll give you a record. Just take that to your pediatrician's office and that should be good. And uh, remember the pediatric dosing is just Pfizer only currently, and it is um, one third the dose. So an adult dose is 30 micrograms of messenger RNA, and uh, the pediatric dose is 10 micrograms, same, same thing, three, three weeks apart. And then give yourself a couple weeks um, for them to have full vaccination. But, you know, there's a good chance that if you get them the first dose now, and that would mean her second dose would be beginning, uh, you know, end of November, beginning of December. And, but she'll have good protection uh, for Thanksgiving. So it's probably okay to have them come by uh, to have a family gathering as long as everyone's vaccinated. Now, I know there's going to be haters on my fan page and people are going to say, well, how dare you put your child at risk? Uh, uh, you know, you don't know what the future long-term effects are. It could affect her fertility, etc. Listen, there's no data on that, that that shows that. There is no long-term effects on fertility. We feel pretty confident about that. People are getting vaccinated and they're having babies afterwards, uh, you know. I wanna, I'll spend a little time talking about where that sort of uh, false misinformation came from. But um, just real quick, I will say for kids, I will tell you that here's the truth. Just put truth in the comment section if you agree with me. I'm going to tell you, having worked in hospitals, having a kid, a, your child be, being in the hospital is much more harmful psychologically, much more up upsetting and disturbing to them than wearing a mask. I promise you. And wearing a mask, you know, the kids don't really care. It's the adults who care. So <clears throat> what we want to do is keep our kids out of the hospital. It's going to do more harm for them to be in the hospital, especially if they're really sick and if they're in the ICU. And what's, um, you know, so a vaccination, they've had shots before. They've had measles, polio, MMR. So just to have another shot is not going to really affect the child. And it's weird because, you know, when vaccines first came out, there wasn't this weird anti-vax debate about like, oh no, I'm not going to get the polio shot. So I looked this up for you guys. Um, back a long time ago in the 1700s, smallpox was a huge killer. And um, smallpox has since been eradicated, uh, except for like a little vial held somewhere in a high security lab. But it's pretty much been eradicated here. And for the people who sit there and go, I'm, you know, just my natural immunity is going to protect me. This is no worse than the flu, you know. Well, that did not work out too well for the Incans, did not work out well for the Aztecs, did not work out well for the Native Americans. You know, the conquistadors did not conquer the Native Americans because they were so superior in strength in every way. And in fact, it's quite the opposite. You know, the Incans and Mayans were running through the forests and mountains like, like billy goats. And the conquistadors were like um, held back with their heavy armor and they were just really clumsy. And that's why the, honestly, like the Mayans and Incas didn't think much about them because they were so clumsy. And um, they got defeated because of smallpox. So I looked this up for you. Benjamin Franklin, forefather of the United States, um, the, uh, the uh, smallpox vaccination, the origin of the vaccination uh, actually came, the word vaccine actually comes from the uh, Latin word for cow. The reason why is because um, this uh, doctor, English doctor noticed that uh, milkmaids did not catch smallpox. If they had 
cowpox, which is a very mild pox. And so he started inoculating people with cowpox, which you can think of it as like a, like a weaker form of smallpox. And that gave them protection to smallpox. And that actually started in the early 1700s, 1730s, right? And Ben Franklin, I looked this up, Ben Franklin has this quote that says, you know, he lost his son. He lost a child to smallpox because, and he says, because I was hesitant. I didn't understand what was, you know, with the vaccines and vaccinations. And I just thought to myself, I was like, I thought vaccines were like 1950s, you know, like, like FDR sort of thing. Like, I didn't think it was like 1700s. Yeah, 1700s. Ben Franklin said, I lost my child to um, smallpox because I was hesitant about the vaccine. And he says, I pray that no other parent makes that same mistake that I made, you know, that I could do it all over again. I'm going to tell you. You know, for the people who are just spewing a lot of anti-vax misinformation and I'm just going to wait and think it and do my own research bullshit, wait till your child is sick in the hospital. It's, you know, your child's sick at home is a miserable experience. The second you have to go see, uh, check your child to the doctor, you're upset, you're worried, you're concerned. And the second the doctor says, you know, we need to put him in the hospital, appendicitis, tonsillitis, whatever it is, right? Like, oh my God, you're already freaking out, RSV. Now you put a child into ICU, whether it's for a heart condition or heart bypass or, you know, septic from appendicitis or sick with coronavirus. You are beating yourself up, you know. And I just hope that reasoning and, and, and you know, emotional stability and control really kind of overrides this. I'll be back again uh, tomorrow or the next day to talk about fertility studies and all this misinformation about that. Listen, I have no concerns about that. My 15-year-old daughter has been fully vaccinated. And after today, my five-year-old daughter will be vaccinated. And I am someday, God willing, going to be a very happy um, grandfather with very spoiled grandbabies. Till next time, best effing dad here. See ya.